so many hashtags right here. Um, Hey guys, what's going on? I'm back-ish, not really. Um, so I'm in a bit of a makeshift uh, setting right now. Um, as some of you may know, uh, the house is being renovated completely. So I am uh, in my buddy's basement right now, but I figured that it, enough time had gone by that I hadn't really been doing anything for the channel, that it was time to put aside a little bit of time to get at least one video out uh, reviewing one of my latest purchases. And uh, yeah, and kind of talk about it. And if you guys can get hand on, get your hands on it, then do so. And if not, then more for me. So today we're talking about the Kilomen uh, STR, and essentially what this bottle uh, they've done with for this is they've taken casks, uh, they've uh, shaved, toasted, and uh, what's the last one? Uh, blah blah blah. Recharred, um, you know, obviously, I should look up this stuff before. Uh, yeah, so shave, toasted, and recharred red wine casks, and um, put in their spirit, aged it, uh, aged since 2012, so probably about six years old. I don't think there's an age statement on this, uh, but 2012, year release 2019, so let's just say conservatively. Uh, six to seven years. 14,500 bottles of this war were uh, released. So let's get this airing out a little bit and then we'll get to talking. All right, so um, Kilimans uh, an Isla distillery, right? As some of you may know, and if you don't know, Isla is a small island off the, co the south west coast of, of mainland Scotland. It's known for their uh, their peaty, uh, smoky uh, whiskies. Uh, the majority, minus maybe two or three expressions out of the, I think now nine distilleries um, are unpeated um, or very, very lightly peated uh, to the point where you almost can't discern the difference. So let's get into the Kilimanjaro. So Kilimanjaro is a small farm distillery, relatively new. I think they started uh, mid mid two thousand, so like two thousand four, two thousand five, if I'm not mistaken. And it's really starting to get a lot of um, a lot of steam with some of the more mature options. This is wonderful. So right away, it's, it, you can smell the the smoke. The, you can smell the peat that they use to um, malt the barley. But along with that, a lot of orchard fruits. A lot of, um, not so much, r well, ripe, but also just juicy fruits. So like a little bit of plums, a little bit of um, like that meaty citrus. So like uh, oranges. Not so, I don't so much smell, but that's the kind of thing that I'm smelling is like that sort of meaty fruit. I know there's going to be a lot of people that are going to make a joke of that. It's that meat, rich, juicy meat. A little bit of that wood comes through, so juicy wood. There's gonna be so many innuendos in this one. Honeys, almost like a like a light syrup, almost. It really is wonderful. Kilimanjaro always. I haven't had a bad Kilimanjaro, and I'll link up to my last uh, Kilimanjaro review up here, right there. Uh, where I reviewed a duty-free Kilhoman that was gifted to me. That video now is quite old. I think I might do I might might do a revisit on that one because it has changed quite a bit since the la since I made that video. So uh, let me do this so you guys can see the label. Yeah. All right. All right. Without further further ado, what this video is uh, now almost seven minutes long, so I don't have time to edit all this. So cilantro, guys. Mm. Yeah, that's great. Oddly enough, it reminds me a little bit of Lagavulin. I think maybe the way it tastes, it tastes like Kilimanjaro, but at the same time it doesn't. 
it's matured. I think this might be the longest matured Killaman that I've had. I know there's a couple longer ones uh, that I that I don't have, can't get my hands on because Canada. But like the Macier Base, an egg, the duty free one that I have. Um, I think there's another one that's escaped my mind. Are relatively young, like three to five years. Um, this tastes much more mature. The peat's strong, but subtle at the same time. It's round. There's no sharp edges on it. I couldn't even talk about the uh, the taste because it was kind of it kind of blew me away a little bit on that uh, that initial taste. I just enjoyed it way too much. Hmm. And that's always a good thing too. You don't always have to, you know, taste notes when you're uh, when you're just drinking. Just enjoy, drink to enjoy. Strong honey with that smoke. Sweet, almost like a like a. It's been forever since I've tried any of it, but almost like a marmalade, 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 like a citrusy orange which goes back to what i sort of smelt prior being that that juicy fruit juicy meaty fruit so many hashtags right here um wow a bit of um like a jarred peach not peach maybe like a jarred peach Jarred peaches and pears. It's so good. But I'm gonna do something really quickly. I need I need to test I need to test this against the Lagavulin. Which one? Maybe not the 12, the 12 super super peat. Maybe I'll do the 16. Or maybe I'll do both. So that's the 16. And that is the 12. So between all three of them, I think I can probably get these. Just keep these in order here. There's a discernible difference between the colors, right? Obviously the STR, because of that um, that barrel uh, sort of uh, stuff they did with the shaving toast and the recharring, you definitely get a much deeper color. Uh, even And even when you look at this, the 16 year color isn't, is not as dark. It's close, but not as dark. And then the 12 year old is just, wonderfully golden golden hay i think the 16 just on the nose is closer the, the 12 is bright and fresh and the 16 definitely has more that age okay so this is fresh on the palate already so let's try the 16. oh wow hmm pretty close pretty darn close wow I'm in shock. I'm in shock. Wow. That's uh, very surprising. That just, uh, literally, that just makes this purchase th that much more special. And the fact that it shows just how much impact a barrel can have on the, on the taste, on the impression that it'll give that it's more mature without aging it as long. I almost don't want to go to the 12 just because I want to give it give it one more shot. I think the only the only thing that the STR is missing on a broader scale, not so much the the nuances of the the Lagavulin like 16, but just on like the bigger profile stuff is that effervescence feeling at the end of the 16 where it almost feels like it's minty, but it's not a minty taste. It's just that cooling effect that that um, that mint gives when you have like a mint gum and you breathe in th uh, like through your mouth and you get that cooling effect. With the STR, you don't get as much of that as you get with the 16. But sort of like everything else is pretty darn close. Like it, it could be, it's very comparable. If anything, maybe the STR is a bit more vibrant without being bright. Like there's, there just seems to be a lot more popping out of the glass. Whereas the 16 is very just across the board, even and 
just well matured and sort of all put together. There's a little bit more spikes, but not so much spikes like round roundness, but just ups like more peaks and valleys. And I'm doing a really bad job at explaining this because I'm so out of practice, even though I was never really in practice. But I, th I think the STR might be a little bit better. I know that might be like hearsay for a lot of people. Sorry, Nick Offerman and Ron Swanson. I think I might like the STR just a little bit better. Ooh, that's that's oh, that's really good. Okay, just for argument's sake, the 12. 12 was my 2018 whiskey of the year. Yeah, no. Oh, so good. So, so good. But not the same. It's a different beast. I'm gonna enjoy that later. I'm gonna put that over there. Yeah, no, that's um, that's a big surprise. I wonder if I've done a Lagavulin in 16 review. I know I did this one, so that'll be up here. And then if I did do the 16, um, I'll put it up here, right there. Uh, fantastic. Um, if the STR, if you can, if you can find one of the 14,500 bottles, definitely, um, def yeah, definitely give it a shot. It's really surprisingly, not really surprisingly, because everything I've had from Kilman's gr been great, but. When you, if you're gonna put it side by side with some of the older, more mature Islas, man, it stands up really well. It makes you excited for what Kilman's gonna do the longer they're around and they can kind of play around with a lot more mature expressions, mature barrels, and sort of do the sort of experimentation with like the STR barrels and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, awesome. Awesome, awesome. Uh, what would I give this? Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use my old rating system, the one to five, um, and I'm gonna give this a, a a high level four. So this is uh if you can find it, I think that you should buy it. Um, Killerman always does good great things, um, and if you like older expressions, then yeah, I would I uh. I, uh I think I might buy another one of these because it's so damn good. Um, also, I guess I should say it's it's uh, bottled 50% ABV, so not cash strength, but uh, definitely up there. It so this is 50 ABV. The Lagavulin 16 is 43 ABV. Um, so 100 proof and uh, 96 proof. Sorry, 86 proof. My math is awful. Um, but very comparable. It does not taste. It it drinks much easier than a fifty. Um, I was I you you wouldn't be able to tell. It's so good. So yeah, high level four. And then look out for the links for these. If you missed the the links up here, links in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed my first review in probably <laughs> how long? I think it was like June. So June, July, August, September, October, November, six months. <laughs> ah, professional as always, guys. Uh, so yeah, in the meantime, um, take it easy, stay safe. Uh, if I don't see you guys prior to the holidays, um, happy holidays to everybody. And as always, cilantro. <laughs>